the forehead of your robot. Hello, my name is Drew Pickles, and today I am commentating one of the worst lost episode creepypastas that have been published into the ruined spin pasta wiki, which was invested with cringeworthy and repetitive THX pastas. Today I'll be looking at a lost episode of Little Einsteins. In case if you don't know, it's an old Disney Junior or Playhouse Disney show, featuring four children going on adventures in a red rocket, teaching us about music and whatnot. Well I haven't even watched this show, even though I made a vague description of it. Wow, I'm reviewing a lost episode of another Disney Junior show, after I did a review about the Lion Guard episode 0, published in GSG The Predator's Lost Episode Wiki. The story is written by no other than Dave1995, who still makes those repetitive THX creepypastas, and lost episode creepypastas that are fucking out of the question. He still makes these kinds of stories everyone has been annoyingly doing on this site, including the likes of deleted scenes and lost internship recreations of movies and TV shows. This still pisses me off, everyone has been copying Robin Horton's works in the worst ways possible, just to officially dominate the platform with shitty THX pastas and the likes of that, and there's no way the formidable robot would read these stories, which now opposed to crappy pastas. Yeah, the word crappy means that is literally a pile of steaming crap, or shit, if you are mature enough to watch this. And to Dave, I'm not actually criticizing you as a person, but these cringeworthy but ridiculous stories, like how everybody on this dying site has been making. There was so much shit wrong with them. Now let's begin. Important notice. Bruh, not too loud. I do not want any activity of vandalism on this page. Anyone who attempts to vandalize will be reported to Squidman Escape. Squidman Escape is actually the admin on this site. In case if you don't know, he was the one who deleted the Think Lost advertisement creepypasta, which is now lost due to its deletion, and nobody dared to rewrite and re-upload the accuracy of that story, which was narrated on this channel back in 2019. I'd say to believe that the Think story has been heavily vandalized. Author's note. The following story might contain some references to other stories, so please be aware. Oh yeah, that's why it's gonna be swell, which is no fucking way that the formidable robot would read this in the serious way possible. Could there be any more better lost episode stories on this site that don't have those kinds of references? The story. Does anyone remember the Playhouse Disney TV show, Little Einsteins? It's a show about a group of four kids named Leo, June, Quincy, and Annie, who go on musical adventures. Kind of like what I said at the beginning, lol. This show was my childhood, and I even have a couple of favorite episodes. Heck, when I was still six years old in 2010, I would usually get up super early to catch an episode of Little Einsteins. However, there is an episode that rather disturbs me to this day. Disturbs me to this day? Oh you gotta add, disturbs me to this day, otherwise it won't be a lost episode creepypasta without that famous line. Can't you see I was being sarcastic? My dad, my older brother and I, had went to see Thor, Love and Thunder. I thought it was a pretty good Marvel movie. We then headed to Wendy's for lunch. My meal was a Bacchanator combo with a chocolate frosty. To be frank, those Marvel movies are fucking boring. We are just in the likes of cartoons and whatnot, rather than modern superhero bullshit. Also, why did the ending of the paragraph reminded me of the Tracy Ullman show of The Simpsons? No wait, that was a chocolate frosty from Wendy's, not a frosty chocolate milkshake. After I finished eating, I had to use the restroom. Before walking in, I spotted a box, close to the Jackson's convenience store, which was paired with the Wendy's restaurant. Perfect, a left alone box that contained a disturbing DVD, a trope that was used, while making these god-awful lost episode creepypastas on this site. I figured I'd bring the box with me, just so I can frame THX, for making all those lost THX trailers. Finally, a reference to those DHX fuckfests in a lost episode creepypasta. Whenever I see that robot, sexy taxi or whatever his name is, I will beat his shiny metal ass, and it goes like. 
And my this is what you get for dominating the hell out of spin pasta. There is no fucking excuse to murder people over a scary logo. You bucket of bulls. This is similar to that Simpsons movie variant. Here comes the hyper realistic blood bag that was swell now back to the shit pasta as soon as we got home i got a steak knife and opened the box my thoughts were somehow wrong as it was instead a little einstein's dvd however it looked rather strange the cover consisted of the four kids standing in front of a black and white grass field swell shit sherlock do you ever think the four characters in a grayscale grass field is strange? To be honest, this image of the cover is like what you expect in those shitty spin pasta stories since the dawn of the 2020s. The DVD was titled as Little Einsteins and his solo mission and other missions. These kinds of DVD titles are what you expect in those fucked up teletubbies creepy pastas. I don't know, could there be a lost episode of the Teletubbies called, Group Pickles Rules the Earth, and other stories? Back to the ship fest. The only reason, I thought it was strange is because I don't think that black and white grass field appeared in any solo mission. Like I said, swell, shit, Sherlock. I took a look back at the DVD, and saw the episode list. But the fourth episode on the list, was an episode I have never seen in my life. The episode's name was, The Dawn Is Your Enemy. I found that very odd. Shit, that's the title of this lost episode pasta. I knew this fuckfest had something to do with that adult swim creepy pasta, based on a closing bumper called, The Dawn Is Your Enemy. That's where shit gets real as we continued. But I was glad to see a rare DVD about Little Einsteins. I popped the disc into my PlayStation 4, and lied down on my bed. It began with the Walt Disney Studios home entertainment logo, and then it showed a trailer for Lightyear. I got rather confused about a little Einstein's DVD being made in 2022, considering the show was cancelled in 2009. Well fuck. Does any of you people watch Pixar's Lightyear when it came out in theaters? Well I didn't, because I don't even know what the fuck is going on here. The reason of that little Einstein's DVD being made in 2022 is that you must be watching a bootleg, mimicking it being officially made by Disney. 2022 is always a good start to make these shit pastas on this site. It then went to the menu. It looked rather low budget, as the background was a black and white drawing of a rose. In the background was what sounded like the little Einstein's theme song being played by an orchestra. The options were like all those other little Einstein's DVDs I've seen. They were play all, scene selection, bonus, setup, and sneak peeks. Clap clap clap. That was a big round of applause for pointing out that poorly made screenshot. It does look low budget, looking like that it was made in Microsoft Paint. I hit play all and sat through three episodes of the show, including any solo mission, the Northern Nightlight, and Go West, Young Train. Both three episodes were good, but the last one made me obviously frightened. A warning came up, before the episode started. It read, The following Little Einstein's episode was created by Easy o. Goodman, before he was fired from Disney in 2022. This episode was also made for an unannounced reboot of Little Einstein's, and as a promotion for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. It contains unnerving nature and disturbing scenes that must not be seen by children. Your discretion is advised. Oh dear. I muttered. That's what I had to mutter myself. Easy O Goodman is just one of your typical criminals of cringeworthy THX deleted scenes, lost internship recreations, and lost episode creepy pastas, spin pasta style. I don't even give a fuck about Adam Kennington and his proxies. Now let's move on. It started off with the intro, which played normal. The curtain closed, as the little Einsteins began to get the show ready. Annie poked her head out of the curtain, while saying the title of the episode. 
June came out and said that the art was made by nobody. There wasn't any music of the day, which felt odd. The episode started with the four main characters in their normal clothes watching TV. For some reason, the characters never watched TV throughout the series. Well shit, this is what the reboot could have been like, characters being lazy as fuck, unnecessary poop jokes, etc. Just like your typical unfunny and sadistic reboot to a cancel show, like how Teen Titans suffered its fate, of being a terrible revival since 2013, and goes on forever. Oh boy. Oh boy oh boy oh boy. Before I read this paragraph, I will not provide random voice actors to do this shit. I'll do the shitty voice acting for this fuckfest of a lost episode story. June looked at the camera and said. Hello, I'm June. We stayed up late watching a network not for children. And he yawned and said. I barely got any sleep from watching TV. I'm gonna head to bed. The kids said okay, and, and he went upstairs. Leo, June, and Quincy then decided to make some breakfast. They made some cereal, and they sat down on the couch. All of a sudden, the closing bumper from Adult Swim, which was the Dawn is your enemy, played on the TV. Well who even had the balls to make an episode for a children's show, based on Adult Swim and its scary bumper, and even the original pasta about the bumper itself. Let's ski daddle. Leo read the words in confusion. Just then, a black colored hand poked out of the TV, which I don't think ever happened in the original bumper. Why did this remind me of username 666? The hand then dragged Leo, June, and Quincy into the TV as they screamed. As soon as the hand left, the TV in the episode froze. As the sun came up, and he woke up and got out of bed. I hope you guys saved some breakfast for me. And he said. Look Annie, it's me, Drew Pickles. Your friends have been abducted by the scary bumper you dipshit. Sorry sorry, that was a mean thing to say to a little girl. Now back to that shit story. And he got downstairs, only to notice that the three kids were nowhere to be seen. She called out the names of Leo, June, and Quincy in shock. And he called for them again, but she started to grow tears from her eyes. Damn, that was fucked up. She wiped the tears and went over to the TV screen. As she went to touch the TV screen, the black colored hand grabbed Annie by the throat and dragged her into the TV. Annie screamed as she fell into what looked like the Illuminati scene from Multiverse of Madness. Leo, June, and Quincy were in a cage, watching in horror as a familiar figure walked in with a ultron block head. Who the fuck ever needs an indefinite article, and which is spelled A-N before a word that begins with an owl. Back to the story. It was Wanda Maximoff. Oh god. Oh god oh god oh god. It's just really that bad. Eeeew. you blah 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 blah. What's Wanda doing in a kid's show? I asked. I always wanted to ask that myself. Putting a Marvel villain, or the likes of that shit, in a lost episode creepy pasta is not scary, it's just disgusting. I also thought those lost episode creepy pastas used to have hyper-realistic blood and gore, and any other shitty cliches back in the days, but this? Was this in the game of our lost episode pastas on the spin pasta wiki attend to me, in the 2020s? I knew this story had a disclaimer about how there's a ton of shitty references. Oh, had me, group pickles, into a lost episode creepy pasta, probably a SpongeBob one. And I'll have a swell murder fest by killing all the characters with my sludge hammer. Yes, I preferred the word sludge instead of sludge. And it goes like... <laughs> I'm more powerful than that THX robot. <laughs> I'm going to destroy Bikini Bottom. I'm <laughs> <laughs> bashing SpongeBob and all of his friends with my sludge hammer like bash, 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 They all let out their blood girdling screams like, then hyper-realistic blood splattered everywhere. Bag, that was swell. Now back to that swell story. Well, well, well. It seems you came looking for your friends. You kids shouldn't even be staying up late. Wanda said. 
At that moment, the Illuminati, Captain Marvel, Black Bolt, Reed Richards, and Captain Britain walked in, surrounding the cage that Leo, June, and Quincy were in. This is fucking insane. How can this shitty crossover fanfiction be that scary, even if this was a lost episode creepypasta? On second thought, this didn't seem like a lost episode creepypasta anymore. Well let's just move on already and shut the fuck up. Wanda stop, said Reed. You've possessed an innocent woman, and kidnapped innocent children. But you can still do the right thing. Let them go. Wanda said nothing. Black Bolt can destroy you, with one whisper from his mouth, said Reed, pointing at Black Bolt. At that moment, Wanda snapped her fingers. What now? Asked Wanda. The camera then panned to show Black Bolt, frantically tapping his face, trying to find his mouth. Then, Ow! Black Bolt's head exploded, causing Leo, June, Quincy, and Annie to scream in horror. Oh my god! Annie screamed before crying. I felt sorry for Annie in the scene. But I was quite shocked to hear one of the kids say God in a kid's show. Bullshit. Do you ever think you feel bad over a fictional character? Screw it. Then, Reed tried to fight Wanda with his stretching powers. But Wanda used her magic to shred him into spaghetti. This caused the Einsteins to scream even more. Kids, go now, we got this. Said Captain Britain, as she and Captain Marvel charged at Wanda. The four kids did as Captain Britain said, and it showed the field from the dawn is your enemy bunker. Guys, Scarlet Witch shouldn't find you, if you climb all the way to the top of this tree. The sun in the bunker said. Henny, Leo, June, and Quincy, climbed up the tree, and did what they could to keep quiet. What the fuck is this lost episode anymore? But at that moment, the channel changed. Why did this shit remind me of the terror of Tiny Toon, from the Simpsons Treehouse of Horror of Nine? I have a vague description, I still do remember that segment in Treehouse of Horror of Nine, where Bart uses a plutonium as a battery for the TV remote, and him and Lisa accidentally enters into the TV, which played the itchy and scratchy show. This time, Annie, Leo, June, and Quincy, were in the final battle from Madagascar. Marty, Melman, and Gloria heard Alex's roar from a distance. Now Madagascar is in this? I asked, in shock. First, that's what I have to ask too. Second, Madagascar was made by DreamWorks, not Disney. And third, was all of this bullshit necessary for lost episode pastas anymore? I know I sound like a broken record, but what the fuck is going on? Like I said, I know the disclaimer said about references, but this is getting ridiculous. So ridiculous, that it got to the point of not being scary, or spine chilling. This is what spin pasta became nowadays. Forgot to mention, the show, Little Einsteins, came out in 2005, the same years that the movie, Madagascar, was released. Now back to the story. Alex? Asked Marty, as he punched a fusa, Fasame spelled, in the face. That's my kill. Mine. Yelled Alex, as he slowly moved towards Marty, Melman, Gloria, Annie, Leo, June, and Quincy. June screamed, like she was seeing a serial killer in front of her. I swear that this is a horrendous realistic screaming in most lost episodes. But then the channel changed once again. This time, they appeared in what looked like the final battle of Avengers Endgame. All the heroes were in the process of killing most of Thanos' army. Oh boy, everybody's favorite Marvel character in the modern meme community. This really really felt like a super swell lost episode troll pasta, rather than a creepy pasta, because it has our meme gods in it. You can't tell that I was again being sarcastic. Scarlet Witch is not shown in the scene, despite being in the film. What is this place? There's a bunch of people and creatures fighting, June said. Out of nowhere, Thanos came out and said, Welcome to the end game. Prepare to meet your fate. Thanos snapped his fingers, making Leto, Annie, and Quincy descend the grid in the process. June looked in horror, seeing her three friends vanish. As for you little girl, this is the fate you'll be receiving. Thanos said, Any last words before you die? Thanos asked, The Avengers will be here to defeat you. 
Jun said. Oh, I doubt it. Said Thanos, as he pulled out his sword. I am inevitable. I think I'll grab my popcorn, while reading this funk-fested story. Before Thanos' double-edged sword made contact with Jun, it was for some reason a dream, as Jun woke up, hard breathing. Why is this actually reminding me of that one scene from that What If Machine episode, from season 3 of Futurama, where Leo woke up from her Wizard of Oz dream? Leo woke up and asked, June, are you okay? June replied with, Yes, it was a terrible nightmare I had. You, Annie, Quincy, and I were watching TV, and then we got dragged into the TV. And there was the switch, she was murdering a lot of Marvel heroes, then the channel switched with the line coming up towards us, and then you, Annie, and Quincy, got snapped by Thanos. I always use my talks like a lady voice for female characters in this story. Leo then said. How horrible. Let's just get back to sleep. It's still a bit early. June said. They went back to sleep, and the curtain before the curtain call closed. The curtain opened up and June was the only one on stage. In some funny and odd way, June was not wearing her shoes which was confusing. June then said. Remember kids, it is best that you all don't stay up late to watch a channel not for kids. Cause if you do, you'll see things that can frighten you, like the bumper for the dawn is your enemy. Good night. Shut up June, go to your Xbox 360 and play one request. Sorry for that comedic outburst, I was making a shitty reference to that other deleted little Einstein's crappy pasta that the Shadow Reader ranted about in his cancelled creepypasta fail series. It then displayed the credits. In the background was the porch theme from Avengers, Infinity War. Overall, the credits seemed normal, including the logos that played after that. After the credits, it stayed at a black screen for about 15 seconds, which was rather unusual. It's like a VHS tape, where a movie or TV show ended, and then displayed a black screen for a few minutes, and then static, until the tape rewinds itself. Well that shit never happened in this pasta, even though the lost episode was in a DVD, not a VHS tape. Now back to reading. I was going to assume that the DVD would show one more thing. And you guessed it, something happened. A skeleton, that is about to pop out. Oh no no I'm so spooked, I don't want to die with hyper-realistic blood coming out of me. And fuck no, in this story, it's not like that. The 15 second black screen was interrupted by a close up shot of the dog, from Baby Mozart. Really? Where's the spooky eyes with red pupils, and the hyper realistic blood on the dog? How is that supposed to be disturbing? In the background, I could hear what sounded like the jump scare sound, from Sally Dobby XE. Good way to shoot on a popular creepypasta in this, even though that these shitty THX pastas, and the likes of that, had this fucking reference, including Sonic Dobby XE as well. In the game of my sarcasm, you can't make a THX, deleted scene, lost internship recreation, or lost episode creepypasta, without referencing spooky classic cliches and pastas like Sonic Dobby XE, Sally Dobby XE and also drew pickles dot fucking exe. Because of how loud the jump scare was, I screamed in shock. Then the episode ended, and took me back to the menu. I couldn't believe that I had seen a little Einstein's episode, with this much fucked up stuff. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that how the protagonist got the fucking balls to use profanity once in this story? What's the big deal? It doesn't hurt anybody. Funk funkity funk funk funk. You know that this video was made for mature audiences. Now back to the reading. My dad came in the room wondering what I was screaming about, so I went to episode selection and played the exact same episode. After he watched it, he felt scared too. I still don't find this episode scary, I still find it ridiculous. This is more like a ridicule pasta, something I created with my brain. The next day, I took the DVD and threw it in the garbage instead of smashing it. Well the DVD's going to be destroyed, when it was in an incinerator, after all the trash was taken by the trashman. I then wrote an email to Disney Television Animation about the episode. As you know, Ezio Goodman was the one behind making the episode. Yeah, it was previously fucking stated on that DVD you threw. 
I still enjoy Little Einsteins to this day, but that lost episode, I hope to never see again in my lifetime, and bag, that La Swell. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. And that, my swell folks, was Little Einsteins, the dawn is your enemy. My thoughts on this swell story, is that it was a marvelous piece of fresh shit. There is so much going on here. We got Marvel, Madagascar, and all that jazz. It got so far to be a troll pasta, because it featured everybody's favorite character in the meme community, Thanos, from Avengers Endgame. I'll take back the things I said about this pasta, because it was terrible but good, and you had me here, group pickles, just to narrate this, for entertainment effect. Also, I don't know why a lost episode of Little Einsteins, based on the Adult Swim Bunker Creepy Pasta, The Dawn Is Your Enemy. You also might check the narration of it on the Formidable Robot channel, but to be fair, it was narrated by a different person, Microsoft Sam, who had the same voice as me, even though Sam did the voice acting for me in those swell group pickles videos. You know what it reminds me of, it's that lot I previously mentioned, is that other deleted little Einstein's crappy pasta, that the Shadow Reader ranted about, in his cancelled creepy pasta fail series back in 2019, before his original channel got deleted. The episode in that deleted little Einstein's crappy pasta was called, The Stampy Horror Game, which featured references to Pokemon creepy pastas, Sonic Dobby XE, Sally Dobby XE and all that jazz. And Little Einstein's The Dawn Is Your Enemy, is basically a sequel to the Stampy Horror Game, but with more ridiculous concepts, and better storytelling. Now let's check these swell comments. This recent one is from Toppy Dreamer, saying, I don't get why there's so many pointless and stupid crossovers. Dude, this is a crappy pasta, and a troll pasta as that as well, because it featured the meme god in it. Still, this is spin pasta in the 2020s, most of these stories can be repetitive with all these shitty THX pastas and the likes of that. This one is from Dark Blue Paramount 2008, stating, Well, we got a new story, happy face emoji. To be frank Dark Blue, it's just your typical lost episode crappy pasta, which were out of the question. This one goes to the publisher, Cade1995 Alt, stating, MC, Cadden73 helped me out with this story, and he added crossovers like Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, and Madagascar, while I added Avengers Endgame. So this might explain why it may look like a fan fiction. Good to see, but the formidable robot no longer attend to make serious narrations of pastas that had this fate. Well another one goes to 19 Kaletman 98 saying, the Bulldog Pulpit by Bakken is from Baby Einstein episode called Baby Mozart. And there's a YouTube link to the Baby Mozart video. Last comment, with two replies, goes to Tobical Studios, who used to be called Meatball Mars, stating, This still felt like a crappy pasta, as it comes to THX and lost internship creepy pastas. None of this was scary in this episode, it's nothing more but a shitty crossover fan fiction. This is basically a sequel to that one lost episode creepypasta, that the Shadow Reader hated reading in his one creepypasta fails video. That's what I just said. The first reply on the comment, was from no other than Dave, saying, I respect your opinion. By the way, what was that creepypasta fails, that the Shadow Reader used to do? And then Tobical replied to him with the link to the video. Oh I love the thumbnail on that video and the white text read in all caps. Never cause a Disney Junior cartoon. And it looks like Leo was having a swell time. Well that's all the comments I have to check, now I'll rate this story. For the ridiculous lost episode Troll Pasta, it was given an 8.5 out of 10 of swellness. For a serious lost episode Creepy Pasta, it was given a 0 out of 10. Well my name is Drew Pickles, the swellest being in the Speakonia community. That brings you this message. I will be featured in a lost episode of Teletubbies, where there will be a swell magical event, where I, and the robot punch, murder the shit out of the Teletubbies with our sludge hammers. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day my swell folks.